hello hello and welcome to another tutorial and uh, this time I will uh, show you how you can uh, work with the aperture system and the if there is aperture uh, sticky or there is oil on the aperture blades itself so in this uh, old super multi coated Takuma 3.5 and it's a 135 millimeter uh, so let's jump into it and see what we can do and we need some tools of course we need some cotton buds with the nail polish remover this is uh, to soften the uh, thread lock and you simply add a little it's not necessary in this lens because I've already been into it. But there I will show you the point where it should be necessary. We need a 1.5 millimeter flathead screwdriver. We need a uh, around 2 millimeter flathead screwdriver. And a tiny one which is around 1 millimeter or 1.2. And uh, of course some tweezers is very handy and of course we need some kind of a rubber tool. I will just show you how you can use it um, a ordinary rubber stopper which you can go in those places who sell stuff for home brewing beers and wine and so. So let's jump into it. It's not that hard, but there are many parts <coughs> to disassemble. And um, I mean, the lens is actually working pretty good, but the aperture, hmm. When I set it to auto, and I would, uh, I mean, I begin with the 3.5 millimeter, <laughs> not millimeter, the aperture is 3.5. So. And I put it up to 222 and look what's happened. I mean, I can turn the ring, aperture ring, but not really much happened. Well, if I set it to manual, like here, I mean, it will go all the way in there. So the automatic part is actually not working proper. I mean, there is no oil in, on, the, on the aperture plates in this lens. But maybe here and then there is in your. But I will explain how you actually can go into it. And you see, uh, I set it to 22. The aperture is set it on 22, and I set it on manual. When I switch to auto, what happened? It will fully open. But if I press the pin, which is, I mean, should be connected to a camera. Uh, look what happened. It will fully close, but the pin will not return. So if I use a tool, I can actually get it to move, but the, the tension on the spring inside here, somewhere over here, is not really that strong to to open the aperture blades again so there is not oil on the blades but there is some other issue in the lens but uh, let's uh, jump into it and see what we can do I begin with the name ring unscrew it with this rubber stopper and simply put it on and turn it counterclockwise <clears throat> you can also get some of those rubber cones on the uh, on eBay or Amazon which is really really good you get them from Japan Hobby Tool they are very good to work with lenses this is another kind I have used for many years you can get them in many different size or from this big one to the smaller one 
they have all their uh, need for I mean good need for working with lenses now all for the name ring and uh, you might think okay I will take off the front lens group but it's easier if you um, set the lens to something infinity here <clears throat> and simply use a 1.5 millimeter screw screwdriver and uh, simply take those tiny screws which is somewhere here this one there there and the last one is over here it will take off the ring here just the ring this ring here it will just come off and uh, so it's it's good with a magnetized screwdriver which will make uh, make it much easier to take out the tiny screw so can be a little difficult to catch the thread the screw head I know it's difficult to see on camera but uh, you will see it on the, the, the lens you have so and the last screw comes out and then I can take off the ring here now what is very much easier than first take off the ring here and then you can go any further with the lens tool on this the the two notch on the side well this is much easier to do but we need to put on some nail polish remover because the front lens group actually is uh, not locked but it sits really tight or can sit tight so therefore you add some nail polish remover on the all around here and just use a cotton bud so now uh, if it still sits really 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 tight one can actually <coughs> use some of those uh, some of those very very sticky garden gloves which is very very good to unscrew those because the rubber is extremely sticky so just have a good grip and then unscrew it it has a long thread so here it comes off this is the whole front lens group so there and we do not need the gloves right now <clears throat> so the uh, focusing ring has to set on infinity and before you take off the three screws which sits there there and the last one is somewhere here down there now before you actually remove it it will be a good thing when you actually assemble the lens again to actually set a mark down here which I already have done as you can see here if you use a uh, a very sharp pointy tool it could be a needle or a uh, just a tiny screwdriver and simply scratch in the um, inside here I'll show you show it uh, because it's very important the infinity is correct when you assemble the the focus ring on the lens body so therefore set the lens to infinity make a scratch 
not only on the the focus ring itself but also on the brass which you can see in here I already have done that it will make it so much easier and without any problems to simply unscrew I mean um, put things back in again so with a yeah two two millimeter screwdriver I can simply unscrew it remember there's also a tiny spacer on it on the screw just so you remember it it should sit there and oh for the next screw <laughs> The thing is, I actually need to take out the helicoid, the inner helicoid out, to access the screws that hold the um, the aperture system. I mean, where the blade is. Okay, tiny screw there, and simply off with the the. Uh, focus ring so it is here you see the stops for each end infinity and and the what you say the near I mean the near end and the infinity now here you can see what I mean there it's easy to make scratch on here and uh, also on the actual uh, outer helicoid and on onto the lens body here and now there are three tiny screws set screws there there and on the back here which need to be just loosened there's no need to unscrew it fully. So by unscrew it gently. If it sits too tight, you can just add a little nail polish remover on the screw head. Just a little. Uh, it, it, uh, it will help a lot if it sits too tight so and the um, where did it win? the screws here so and this is the tube where the index mark is and um, I need to take that out and just lift it out and good thing is before you actually take it off it is also good to have a, uh, where the index mark is that the um, make a mark where the actually is so you know where this ring will be put on again so in line with the index mark and also up here with the with the uh, focus helicoid system so off with that so and there is a um, this one screw here you do not need to take off and of course uh, if you only want to take out the whole thing here you do not really take off the, the the aperture ring but there's something you should know there is a tiny steel ball in here so uh, be aware of where it is it sits there so <clears throat> it's on the opposite side of where the the uh, auto manual uh, button is so if you turn it over you will see it here oh it's very close to the the not the pin here on the back 
not a pin, but I don't know what it actually is, but it doesn't matter. Just so you know, it's as close to that. But there's no idea to take it off if you only want to take out the aperture plates. Well, there are three screws around here. And I also set a mark here so I know where things has to sit when I put it back in again. So the three screws, which is uh, sit one there, there's one here, and the last one is here. So by unscrew those, we can actually lift off the whole helicoy system, which will mean this part here will come off in once in um, all together as a, a assembly. And then the last screw is here. So it's countersunk screws. Now lift off this part here by simply open it and you will see what's actually happened here. So this is how it looks inside. See, the fork here is connected to the pin here. You can see the aperture blades is, is there is not a problem there. <clears throat> what I found out is actually uh, it was the pin here, or actually the connection between the pin and this part here, if I set it to aperture 22, so the um, the pin itself, you see here, if I can show it, I can move this little piece of metal and if I push the button here, it should come up. But the pressure, I mean the stretch of the spring here, is not strong enough to simply press it back again. Because there is some sticky thing also. And maybe it needs some lighter fluid, uh, I would guess so. But as, as you can see, the aperture blade will not fully close. I mean, the aperture system will not fully close. So uh, I think this one will need some care. And uh, what should one do? So uh, let's continue with the plates because that's the important thing. Um, you see, the focusing system, I mean the focusing helicoid, is my starting point here. So, but what I actually need to do, I need to take off the back lens group, which in this case is uh, actually loose but if it isn't again you need to add some nail polish remover here on the uh, on the thread here just to soften the um, the thread lock but in my, in my case because I've been into the lens I can just unscrew it Oh, it's a pretty long thread. As you can see here, the white stuff here is actually thread lock. But it's not a problem here, but uh, it could be in your lens. Now, now, the three screws 
there, there, and there need to be unscrewed. And we need a uh, tool for actually taking out the the whole aperture system. And uh, for that we can use a kind of a, uh, a container or whatever that is high enough so you can uh, take the the aperture assembly out. So all for those here. And and the last screw and just loosen it because then we will have a um, put in some kind of tube so and uh, simply be sure it will not fall out so there and then it should be possible without any problem to simply push on the aperture where I did my long screwdriver go here no my dentist tool maybe it's better um, so we simply push it out gently And here we are, almost there. It's a pretty long tube. <laughs> and the is a re, has a really tight fit. So here we are. So this is how it looks inside here. I mean there could be some oil on the aperture and in here because there are some I mean just a tiny amount of of uh, oil here but it's not a problem in my case see blades is actually working pretty good so I'll just wipe away the rest here But the point is, if there is oil on your, um, on the blades in your lens, of course you need to unscrew, I mean, take out the blades itself and clean it proper. See, there are three screws around, oh, sorry, one there, there, and there. And they need to come off, but with the, before doing so, we simply need to set a mark somewhere and it could be something like over here where you set the mark close to the pin so simply make a small scratch here on here on this and on the ring so just so you know where the things has to sit. Of course, there are three marks from the screws here, but uh, if you're not sure where they actually should sit, hmm, that's the point. But uh, I will unscrew those three screws, and there shouldn't be any problem with that. They are tiny. And have the 
aperture uh, assembly sit like that always and we can use a stand to put it on mm. not really the best one but did it go mm. <coughs> oh there it is so it's another rubber stopper which is very handy to have the the um, aperture assembly hanging on maybe it's better so there yeah fine and simply unscrew it here <clears throat> in this video I will not clean my the blades in here because there is no oil on it but uh, I will show you how it actually taking apart since I haven't disassembled the uh, aperture system here <coughs> uh, I would take a little closer look at it so all three screws are out I have set the mark here so it should be quite easy to lift out the uh, the ring that holds the place in place so maybe the blades will come off I don't know something like there and uh, it should be possible to lift off the ring maybe the blades will follow I don't know yet so there, there. and there is something over here one can just uh, press down the pin so the blades will hopefully stay there okay that's fine so now lift off the uh, I'll just have my mark here in line with the pin so lift it out Mm-hmm. Oh, where is the bigger screwdriver here? It's a really tight fit. So this is how it actually look in here. See there is no oil on the plates. So there's no actually that problem here but uh, if I do so I can take out the plates So let's see how it will, yeah. <clears throat> so I begin with the full open aperture. So you can see here what it goes. I will just zoom in a little. And then lost. I mean, okay, little fellow. Oh, 
funny thing. The aperture plates are made of steel, so we know that. Because they are magnetizing by a screwdriver. It's not a problem when you work with those. So, here we actually are. And... Uh, some fragments of something. Okay, now I will uh, go further into it because there are three screws around here that actually hold the ring here, this ring here. So I will also take that off. And I don't think there shouldn't be any problem with that. No, it will stay in correct place. So all for that and the three tiny screws. And uh, have a good finger on here. Or oh, a tiny something so you not... Well, if there is any... Uh, oil on the blades it doesn't really matter because you need to clean it anyway in um, to clean them in isopropyl alcohol 99% not necessary here but uh, that's just what I use so this um, this ring will also come out as you can see here and the uh, oh <laughs> well I didn't see that because there is a um, there's also a small the small pin here has two screws that needs to be taken off first hmm. how could I know But since it's uh, adjustable, as we can see here, so it's a good thing to um, actually set a mark around here, just so you, just so you know where this one has to sit. Correct. And it doesn't really matter because no one will see the scratch. But you know where it should sit. And we can also do it on the other side. So, now you see, if I take out this one, I mean when I take out this one, I know exactly where it should sit when I put it back in again. So, no problem. And remember how the pin is facing. So, here we are. And the aperture system is fully dis disassembled. So I can just continue with putting things back in again and uh, as if there was any oil on it, it would be the same. So the uh, assemble process is actually the same as when disassemble it. So there, mm -hmm. 
and wet. <laughs> it's not easy. Well, zoom out a little. Oh, I need to change battery in my camera. So, <clears throat> and maybe it's just easier to have a finger on here. Now, put this on here. And where did the screw hole went? There. And put the screw in. And the other screw. And you see, I have set the marks here, so I know where it should sit. And uh, therefore, when I'm done, the aperture system will sit the exact same place, like before I took it apart. So there it is. And then the, the small ring here comes in. And so we have a good, a, a better where the screw holes there. Load my screwdriver. Maybe it's a little too big for that, but let's see. There. Ah. <laughs> okay, it's a little too big that screwdriver for that. Tiny screws. Where did it went? Oh, come on, little fellow. Okay, things are much better. Then we can just screw things in. Mm -hmm. And the last one. And then it comes to the blade where they will come in. Interesting lens to work with and it's it's really well done with the material and the way they design it. I think it's a beautiful work. Now I think it'll be that. So, put the aperture pin here all the way over to the left, and then we are ready to put in the blades. But before doing so, I will change battery in my camera. So, be able. okay, new battery in now. <clears throat> then we uh, put in the blades and since there's no oil of those on those just need to put them in and it will sit there and the next one goes under okay no we do it in the other way I'll just put them over the other it's easier and then put the last one under so So, and this one comes on here. Come on. 
little fellow there and the last one now the last one will be put in here under the first one and simply put on here so no little fellow <laughs> so and you simply just put it under there and there it is so and the next thing is what I put on the uh, the aperture ring here there's also some oil there it's not really a problem but when I um, put it on remember I set a small mark and I also set a small mark here and they should f fit on and uh, it can be a problem when putting on the this ring because uh, the plate I mean the axle end of the plate as you probably can see hopefully if I lift it up the uh, the pins I mean the axle from each plate need to be aligned with the um, with the holes of course so if I twist this a little hmm, doesn't really help but uh, therefore if I can do so and simply there and hopefully get it to come on to the correct <clears throat> place e there is a hole and the last one I can press a little on the ring so it it, it will stick to the the axle and then hopefully put the, the last one in here and then it should be possible to push down the ring no come on Not easy, as you can see. And uh, this one sits there. And here we are. So things are actually working right now. And I can just uh, screw the three screws in, the tiny one. And uh, so it's not a big problem to assemble the rest of the, the lens. So, so I'm safe <laughs> with one screw set in. Catch the thread. Hmm. Well, sometimes it's not easy with those small screws. There we are. And the last one goes in. There. Okay, so, so 
So now everything is in proper order. And uh, what so, what so, yeah, I'll just put it into the helicoy system and uh, wipe away some, some of the oil that sits in here. Not really much. So, and there's something over here. It's not really a problem because it will not move. <clears throat> now, to put the things back in again, I will uh, use my rubber cone here and simply put this on here and uh, try, I mean, try to put this over here and it should probably align with the holes if not it I can just move the the helicoy I mean the focus system so there it is and uh, on with the three three screws that hold the aperture system mm-hmm Okay, too big. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you, A little fellow? Okay, maybe it's easier to just take it in my hand. And so, Safe and the next. So it's much easier now. <laughs> Where I put in one screw and um, come on, little fellow. You have to go in there. Mm, come on. Yes. And the last one. Mm -hmm. Come on. I know it's difficult to see, but the, when uh, the light is on things here and they are black, the camera cannot really figure out what kind of setting they have to sit on. So, we're here, <coughs> and it's right, actually ready to be put into the to the back of the lens body but as I mentioned earlier uh, this uh, the pin for the automatic aperture it's a bit stuck so uh, what to do about it hmm. well <clears throat> There's something there. Hmm. Maybe it's where I should get off the the uh, aperture ring. So, because it's actually possible to see the little spring here. I mean the steel ball here. Can we get it out? Yes. Now, 
there are three screws around here <laughs> again and then it should be possible to take out the whole uh, assembly here I'm not sure because I haven't tried yet but let's see how it will go I think I need to take off this screw here those two screws And hopefully, if for the aperture ring, I'll do those two. Maybe I could just add a little lot of fluid here to soften the possibly old glue or whatever it is but uh, I will continue with go further into the now there is a screw here there and over here I have no idea what I'm coming into so uh, because I haven't been into that part of the lens but let's see what it what it will go. <clears throat> and then the last screw here. So now <clears throat> I have no idea what it actually doing. Or if it's possible to take the whole thing out here, looks like, or not. Maybe it is, so I have no idea. Okay. So if I take out this, okay. So it is. Uh -huh. So this is the pin that I need to do something with so it can be, you say, uh, okay, there, 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 yeah. I will just put a scratch. Well, I know where things should sit, but this one here, just make a small mark here. So, no problem with that. But the pin here, how does it go? You see, it actually works okay. But if we look at the pin itself, there are some very dry uh, thing on, maybe it's corroded or so, I have no idea. And how does it actually look? Okay, can it stay there? Yeah. How does it look into the back part here? And uh, I don't know actually what this pin do doing. What is it? Oh yeah, I see it. The uh, so it's for the the manual auto change function. Weird the way they make it. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I think I will. Uh, yeah, what do I think I will do? I 
I think I will just loop the, uh, or maybe just clean the, the uh, the little hole in here. But uh, whatsoever use oh a two stick could be good for that. Hold on. Yeah, a uh, two stick. Maybe it's too thick. Yeah, maybe a little. I will just apply a little lighter fluid on the pin here and uh, see what I actually can do. So, wow, a lot of something old. <clears throat> and hopefully it would be uh, better. I think I will not apply any oil or thing because I think it has to run dry. But let's see if I put it in here. How does it go? Yeah, there shouldn't be any problem. Well, I will just put this on again and hopefully it will be fine. The pin has to come down to the hole here and this uh, arm here I think it has to slide around here. I have no idea but I will put it on anyway. Where did that bloody pin go in? Go in. So. And it should be possible to put straight on. In a way. Okay, yeah, I think it will, I think it will work. <laughs> I mean, hopefully. Okay, yeah, the holes are correct, aligned and uh, put on those two, I mean, three screws. There. There it is. Yeah. And the next two. Where did it go there? Fellow, what's going on here with that bloody screw? I think it will work okay. So, <clears throat> mm 
Hmm. Something is not correct. Into place. screw here so there yeah I think I'm working better now screw will come in there yeah so it should be there the last one here where did it go here was a hole Maybe a bigger screwdriver will help. So here we are. There is something that is a bit sticky and I cannot move this hmm okay there is something that is not correct Weird. Well, better take it apart again. Sometimes <coughs> it can be a problem when putting back things when you think. Um, should be very easy. Where did that screw go? Okay. <clears throat> so there. Something was kind of not correct in place, but I think it should be. Could it be that? Hmm. Weird. Now I think it's better I just take the whole assembly out. Ah, yeah, I see the point. You see, down here, I know it's difficult to see, but down here there is a pin, this pin, here. Uh, you have to push the auto manual all the way over there and then it should be easier to put on but uh, there's something not correct 
better take it out again. Oh, if it's possible, hmm. I mean, it should be. So here we come. So there shouldn't be any problem. It looks like there is something over here. So there must be a pin somewhere, maybe this one here. Mm -hmm. So there. <coughs> Okay, one could take off this this pin here, there, but uh, don't think I will do it. I make my scratch there earlier, so it should. I mean, it should come on, just straight in. This pin is there, this pin, uh, maybe it's this bloody spring here. <laughs> it could be the point. Put the long pin in here. pin goes in there. I mean it should. There. And the whole thing goes on here. There's uh, the auto manual which will be there. And then it should just go straight in. I mean, the uh, spring there. Nah, yeah, I see. There is one, this uh, spring that makes the click. This should also go push a little. So, now we are on the right track, yeah. It looks much better. You see the the spring that sits under here that makes the click from the manual auto function. And now this one is also working almost. Hmm. Yeah, I think.
think it will be fine. Now, <coughs> let's put on the small screws. And it should be possible without any problems. Well, need to turn it a little. So. Now that was tricky. Mm -hmm. But it's not always easy to work in with that those old lenses. I think it will need some, some very fine oil. Just a little. Yeah. It helps a lot. So I will I think it will do the the whole thing correct. And the last screw where did it go? Here. So, and then the two screws for the aperture plate will come in on each side here. So, and the last one. So, and then the two spacers will come in. And then we are actually ready to do the rest of the assemble. The little steel bowl sits somewhere here. There sits and the aperture ring comes on. There are two notches and you can see whether whether all this notch will sit on the where the steel bowl goes. So let's see if I can catch those, those two, there was, press the steel bone down a little and put the ring on. And now I can uh, actually put the hole, the front, I mean the focus system on here. And uh, assemble the rest of the, the lens. But before doing so, <coughs> just to make it easier for me, I will just add the back lens group here. Oh, tighten it gently. And then put it in. Here and so there it is. Well, 
Well, the pin was actually a little worn out, so, uh, hmm. but it's not a problem for me. But if you have a lens that is, you use the auto aperture, then it could be um, that one should polish the pin, as I see it. Those three screws that hold the the focusing part. Oh come on, that bloody steel ball there. <laughs> so and the last screw. Hey. It did again, hmm. and so, and on with the uh, the little ring here, with the index mark comes on here. So. And uh, the small screw driver for those tiny set screws. Sit there. There and the last one here on the back. So. Well, it works better, but um, yeah, it is what it is. So the focusing system sits there, and the mark, which I said in the beginning, will fit in line with the with the index mark. So it's I can put it on here. And put in the three screws that actually hold the the focusing ring in place. There it is. So tighten it gently. And then we are safe to put the rest in. Oh. Where did it go here? There. And the last screw, which is for the focusing ring. <laughs> so, and then set it to near end, put in the front lens group I mean there's no need for using any thread lock in this <coughs> not in my opinion and those bloody screws <laughs> which sometimes is a little it can be a little problematic problematic to put in Well, I can just add one, then simply put it on, catch the thread. If it's possible to 
do so. Didn't I catch the thread? Well, I didn't. There it is. So, and then the thickened last screw for this lens go in. Yeah, there it is. So it was more than just the plates <laughs> I show here, but I uh, hope you can you can uh, use it when uh, working with your lens. See, sometimes it's not that easy to working with those uh, old stuff. This has been used for I don't know how many years. So here we are and the only thing I need to do is put on the nameplate using my rubber tool here. And then it's done. So that was actually all for now in this uh, old lens, which, uh, well, it didn't help that much, but uh, because of the, the worn out pin that maybe need some more, what do you say, care of, of her, uh, so but I you only use it on on uh, on manual anyway so that was all for now so hope you enjoy the content and can be use it bye bye